Our brain is a very complex system. It has 100 billion of neurons and approximately 100 trillion of synapses between the neurons. If we want to understand how the brain works and how consciousness emerges from this activity, we need to develop a new tools in mathematics. In our paper, we used network theory in order to cope with this enormous complexity. In order to build our network, we used MRI imaging and DTI imaging. With the MRI imaging, we can use all the neuron cells in order to, to build 1000 nodes. And with the DTI imaging, we take all the fibers of the white matter and use it uh, as links. And then we've got 15,000 links or edges between our nodes. In that manner, we built a structural network out of our cortex. But what we want to know is how this structural network can induce a global emergent properties out from the activity. In order to do so, we used analysis called casual decomposition. Casual decomposition takes into account not only the local properties of the node, but also the neighborhood of the node. So with this casual decomposition, we can look at global properties of neighborhoods, neighborhoods of connections. Every neighborhood of connections, we call it another shell. So our network topology has a lot of shells of connectivity. And in the end, we can see the most connected neighborhood. To this neighborhood we call the nucleus, the nucleus of the network. When we applied casual decomposition on our cortical networks, we saw that 20% of the nodes are in the nucleus. The rest 80% of the nodes were in the different connectivity shells and actually connected together and form a giant component. When we look at all these shells of connectivity and the nucleus, uh, we saw that there is a hierarchy here. Hierarchy in terms of data integration. In this hierarchy we have three groups, the group of the low shells, the group of the high shells, and the group of the nucleus. And you can imagine a flow of information from the lowest group to the highest one. The interesting thing is that every group has also a different functionality in the brain. For example, the lowest group has a very specific functions, for example, face recognition or memory. And then the data flows to the higher shells and there, there is um, much more data integration. Over there we can see areas that are in the executive networks and in the, our working memory. And then in the end it goes to the highest group, the nucleus. Now the nucleus is a very interesting group. It spreads all over the cortex and it doesn't have a lot of local structures. Instead, it has a lot of global structures. We call it interconnected collective. It's densely linked with each other and it can do a global function because of its global structure. Which global function can it be? Maybe consciousness, actually. And indeed, when we check the areas of the nucleus, we saw that they have a high correlation with conscious activities. For example, the default network and all the midline uh, structures are in this nucleus. So to summarize, we saw hierarchy of data integration from the lowest shells to the highest shells and to the nucleus. And the nucleus is a structure that global functions like consciousness can emerge out of it.